Welcome to the solutions to the Regents Physics Work, Power, and Energy problem set, problems numbers 1 through 5. This set of problems also ends up being a lesson on work and power, so make sure you take good notes and if you need to add comments as we go along to what's already written on here, make sure you do so. We start with number one. Grace has an after-school job carrying cartons of new copy paper up a flight of stairs. The mass of the paper does not change. Grace's physics teacher suggests that Grace does no work all day, so she should not get paid. In what sense is the physics teacher correct? And what arrangement of payments might Grace make to ensure compensation? This is a work question. On the reference table, you'll see that work is calculated by F times D. But what's really important to remember about the work equation is that the force and the displacement have to be parallel to each other in calculating work. They have to be parallel to each other. So when we look over here, here's a, here's a flight of stairs, here's Grace, and the free body diagram on Grace would be her weight down and the vertical force that she applies upward to get to the top of the stairs. Well, in order to calculate work, the force that she applies has to be parallel to the displacement. Well, you can see, first of all, that her going up the stairs itself, the distance, the angle distance of the stairs is not parallel to F. However, the height of the stairs, labeled D in this diagram, is parallel to F. So to calculate her work done, we would take the force that she applies, which is the same as her weight to overcome it, times D, the parallel total height of the staircase. Well, for every trip Grace makes up the stairs, she has to make that trip back down the stairs, so her actual total displacement is zero. If her displacement is zero, then F times D is zero and she's done no work. So what arrangement might Grace make? she might arrange to get paid for every distance traveled up the stairs rather than her total displacement which is which is zero. So there's your first introduction to the concept of work. Key, key uh, ideas here are that the force and the displacement have to be parallel to each other when calculating work. By the way, side note here, we could poke fun of tracksters who do the 400 meter and say that they do no work. Why? Because one complete time around the track would be no displacement and even though they've applied force they would be do no work because their displacement is zero. Onward to number two. Two people of the same mass climb the same flight of stairs. The first person climbs the stairs in 25 seconds, the second person does so in 35 seconds. A. Which person does more work? Explain your answer. And B. Which person does produces more power, explain your answer. Well, to answer A, again, W equals F times D, the force that it's applied is MG, the force applied to overcome the person's weight to get to the top of the stairs. And again, just like in this diagram up here, D is the vertical height of the stairs. Well, if they have the same mass, their M's are equal. If it's the same flight of stairs, their D values are equal, and G is a constant, so MG times D means they both do the same amount of work. However, in B, we have our first introduction to power in physics. Power is the rate at which work is done. Anytime you hear the word rate, that means you're going to take the quantity discussed and divide it by time. So if power is the rate at which work is done, work would go in the, in the numerator and be divided by time in the denominator. So power is work divided by time. Well, in this problem, we've already established that both, both people have done the same amount of work. However, one does it in 25 seconds, the other one does it in 35 seconds. You can see that the relationship between time and power is an inverse relationship. So the person that produces more power, the greater power, is going to be the one with the lesser time. 
because they've done the same amount of work in less time, which would require more power. The person who's done it in a greater amount of time has produced less power because of the inverse relationship between time and power. Number three, the third floor of a house is eight meters above the street level. How much work is needed to move a 150 kilogram refrigerator from the street to the third floor? Here we have a refrigerator, free body diagram on the refrigerator is the weight of the refrigerator down, the force upward that we need to apply to lift it, the distance of eight meters vertically. Okay? No one's going to disagree that you also are applying force um, to get that from the uh, bottom floor to the third floor of the house or the distance of stairs or whatever the case may be that your elevator, whatever the case may be that you're doing to get it there. But physics work is that the force and the displacement are parallel to each other. So we're only concerned about overcoming the weight over the eight meter displacement. W equals F times D. The force is the same as the weight because the force applied is overcoming the weight. The mass is 150 kilograms, little g, 9.81 meters per second squared, and the vertical distance, 8 meters. Multiply, you should get to two digits, 1.2 times 10 to the fourth joules. Number four. Mike pulls a sled of mass 4.50 kilograms across level snow with a force of 225 newtons along a rope that is 35.0 degrees above the horizontal. If the sled moves a distance of 65.3 meters, how much work does Mike do? Here we have a diagram and we have the rope attached to the sled. I put an F equals 225 newtons of force that Mike is pulling here at 35 degrees with a horizontal. The displacement is 65.3 meters across the ground. You can see that F is not parallel to D. So what we have to do is we have to find the component of F that is horizontal and parallel to D. That component of course would be the Fx component which would be calculated by F cosine of 35 degrees since the Fx component is adjacent to the 35 degree angle. We start with W equals Fd. Remembering that F and D have to be parallel to each other. We substitute the um, X component of F, F cosine theta in place of F times D. 225 newtons times the cosine of 35.0 degrees is our substitution times 65.3 meters for our displacement and when we multiply we get 1.20 times 10 to the fourth joules to three digits because of our measurements in the problem. Lastly number five Paige has a mass of 52 kilograms she rides up the escalator Ocean Park in Hong Kong this is the world's longest escalator with a length of 227 meters and an average inclination of 31 degrees. How much work does the escalator do on Paige? Well, the escalator has to take her weight, apply a force to it to lift her a vertical height that we need to determine here, knowing that the escalator itself is 227 meters long and is inclined at 31 degrees. What's interesting in this problem is that we are not taking a component of a force. This time we're taking a component of the d distance she travels in order to find out the uh, displacement that is parallel to the force the escalator has to apply. So again we start with W equals F times D. The force applied by the escalator is to overcome Paige's weight and the displacement is 227 sine of 31 degrees because the height of the escalator, the D value labeled in this diagram, is opposite the 31 degrees with 227 meters being the hypotenuse. We now substitute 52 is her mass, 9.81 meters per second squared for little g, 
227 meters times a sine of 31 degrees and to two digits we get a work done by the escalator of 61,000 joules or 6.1 times 10 to the fourth joules. Please remember to ask any questions you may have on these first five problems as your introduction to work and power and we will also complete numbers six and seven in class tomorrow.